Technologies on the cutting edge are changing the face of medicine, and they're healing injuries to a degree most people never would have thought possible. Prepare to be amazed. Our cover story is reported now by Wyatt Andrews. Good afternoon, Hobby Town, USA, Lee speaking. Three years ago, Lee Spivak sliced off the tip of his finger in the propeller of a hobby shop airplane. I was behind the wing and I, I went like this. And I was what happened next ground, propelled him like, into the future of medicine. You know, down, Spivak's brother, Alan, a research scientist, sent him this special powder and told him to sprinkle it on the wound. And I powdered it on until it was covered. To his astonishment, every bit of his fingertip grew back. Your finger grew back flesh, blood, vessels, and nail. Four weeks. In four weeks. Right. Is this essentially what regrew Mr. Spivak's finger? Yes, it is. We took this, turned it into a powdered form. Dr. Stephen Badalik of the University of Pittsburgh says that powder, a substance made from pig bladders called extracellular matrix, holds some of the secrets behind the emerging new science of regenerative medicine. It tells the body, start that process of tissue regrowth. Badalik, the lead researcher at Pittsburgh's McGowan Institute for Regenerative Medicine, is one of the many scientists who now believe every tissue in the body has cells which are capable of regeneration. All scientists have to do is find enough of those cells and direct them to grow. Somehow the matrix summons the cells and tells them what to do. It first gets them to the site where they need to be, but then it, then it helps instruct them in terms of where they need to go, how they need to differentiate. Should I become a blood vessel? Should I become a nerve, a muscle cell, whatever? If this helps Mr. Spivak's finger regrow, could you grow a whole limb? In theory. Here you see an a engineered blood vessel. But there are advances in the science of regeneration that already go beyond theory. You can actually see the, the vessel beating. In this lab at Wake Forest University, a lab he calls a medical factory, Dr. Anthony Atala is growing body parts. That's a heart valve. This is a heart, an engineered heart valve. Atala and his team have built from the cell level up 18 different types of tissue so far including muscle tissue, whole organs, and the pulsing heart valve of a sheep. And is it growing? Uh, absolutely. These cells are continuing to form new heart valve tissue. When people ask me, what do you do? We grow tissues and organs. You really are making body parts. We are making body parts that we can implant right back into patients. Dr. Atala, one of the pioneers in regenerative medicine, also believes every type of tissue has cells ready to regenerate if only researchers can prod them into action. Sometimes that prodding looks like science fiction. You're using heart cells yes, in an inkjet printer. Yes. What's emerging from this printer is the heart of a mouse. Mouse heart cells go into the ink cartridge and are then sprayed down in a mouse heart pattern layer by layer. Dr. Atala believes it's a matter of time before someone grows a human heart. The cells have all the genetic information necessary to make new tissue. That's what they're programmed to do. So your heart cell is programmed to make more heart tissue. Your bladder cells are programmed to make more bladder cells. Atala's work with human bladder cells has pushed regenerative medicine to a transformational breakthrough. In this clinical trial at Thomas Jefferson Hospital in Philadelphia, Dr. Patrick Cheneau is performing a bladder transplant with an organ built from the patient's own cells. In a process developed by Dr. Atala, the cells were grown in a lab and then seated on this bladder-shaped scaffold. Eight weeks later, the scaffold, now infused with millions of bladder cells, is transplanted into the patient. When it dissolves, Dr. Cheneau says what's left will be a functioning new organ. The cells will differentiate into the two major cells in the bladder wall, the muscle cells and the lining cells. They know to do that themselves? They do. Are you thinking this is the future? Yeah. It's very much the future, but it's today. We're doing this today. One, two, three, look. Today, one of the biggest believers in regeneration is the United States military, which is especially interested in the matrix that regrew Lee Spivak's finger.
The Army, working in conjunction with the University of Pittsburgh, is about to use that matrix on the amputated fingers of soldiers home from the war. Can we make skin? Can we make bone? Dr. Stephen Wolf at the Army Institute of Surgical Research says the military has invested tens of millions of dollars in regeneration, hoping to regrow limbs, lost muscle, burned skin. And you see these casualties coming back, and it's hard to ignore that this guy is missing half his skin. This guy is missing his leg. You start asking the question, is there somebody out there who may have some technology that can do this for us? You mean regrow the tissue? The answer is maybe. At the burn unit here at the Brook Army Medical Center, the very idea of regeneration brings a glimmer of hope. This arm burnt off, all the skin and muscle. Army Staff Sergeant Robert Henline was the only survivor of an IED attack on his Humvee north of Baghdad. Well, what do you make of the fact that the Army is so heavily invested in that technology? It's a great idea that they can come up with something that's less painful and can heal it with natural growth without less scarring on it. Definitely something to check into. The race to check into regeneration has gone global. This machine, being tested in Germany, sprays a patient's own cells onto a burn, signaling the skin not to form scar, but to regrow. You could fashion this into a, a tube like this. In a clinical uh, trial in Argentina, for, uh, Dr. Badalik is about to implant small. matrix material, shaped like an esophagus, into patients with throat cancer. You expect the body to regrow a piece of its esophagus. We fully expect that this material will be degraded and, and, and cause the body to reform normal esophageal tissue. Injecting one. And in this clinical trial at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, patient Mary Beth okay. Babo is getting her own adult stem cells injected into her heart. The hope is to grow new arteries. Her surgeon is Dr. June Lee. It's actually, the, if you will, what we would consider the holy grail of our field for coronary artery disease. The holy grail because a patient who can regrow a blocked artery may never need surgery. It's a big difference from open heart surgery to this. If people don't have to go through that, um, this would be the way to go if it works. Corporate America already believes regeneration will work. Investment capital has been pouring in to commercialize and mass produce custom made body parts. We're actually building a very real business around a very real and compelling patient need. Dr. Steven Nichtberger is the CEO of the Tengion Corporation, which has bought the license, built the factory, and is already manufacturing the bladders developed at Wake Forest University we told you about earlier. Tengion believes regeneration will soon revolutionize transplant medicine. Transplant patients, instead of waiting years for a donated organ, will ship cells off to a lab, wait a few weeks, and grow their own. I look at the patients who are on the wait list for transplant. I look at the opportunity we have to build bladders, to build vessels, to build kidneys. In regenerative medicine, uh, I think it is similar to the semiconductor industry of the 1980s. You don't know where it's going to go, but you know it's big.